This is a photograph I shot recently when trying out a new camera. And by new camera, I don't mean a new vintage camera that I found, but an actually new camera. In fact, you might know it. Where is the line between dreaming and feeling blue? This is the Long Weekend 35mm film camera designed by none other than the duo behind this brand, Willem and Alison. As a big fan of Willem, his photography and YouTube videos, I of course was very excited to see him launch a film camera. I mean, this is kind of crazy. Imagine you launch a film camera. Anyway, I really wanted to try it out and so I got it. In this video, I want to briefly introduce the camera and then, as we usually do, take you with me out on a shoot to see what I can capture with this cute little camera. So, introduction time. This is the Long Weekend 35mm film camera, a pretty straightforward name. The concept for this camera was to make a disposable film camera, but make it not disposable, instead reusable. So they took the casual, easy and beginner friendly aspects of the disposable camera, but designed their own version of a point and shoot camera that can simply be used as often as you want, just like a normal point and shoot camera. So it's made from plastic, however I must say the plastic feels much more durable than what I'm used to from disposable cameras, which I suppose makes sense because it's a reusable camera. And it is very manual, so it's not one of those modern point and shoots that will automatically rewind your film and all that, you do get to experience that yourself. Leaning on the characteristics of a disposable camera, it features a fixed and focus-free 31mm f9 lens and a fixed shutter speed of a 120th of a second. So yes, you do not have to set anything on this film camera, it is all fixed already, which makes shooting very easy, however please do not confuse this with a completely automatic point and shoot camera. Fixed settings means that no matter what the lighting situation is, the camera is just going to shoot and so it is in your responsibility to determine whether the lighting will be sufficient for a decent photo. Basically, I thought I'll just put in an ISO 400 film and stick to shooting in the sun and I should be fine. And if I do want to shoot indoors or somewhere else that is dark, I'll have to use the flash. But it is important to keep in mind here that this camera is limited to that, so you can't just shoot anything. It's safest if you just stick to shooting outdoor in the sun. Anyway, after receiving the camera and checking it out, I decided to load it with a roll of Fujifilm Premium 400 and take another very beautiful test shot. The reason why I do these test shots is that I'm checking whether the shutter actually moves, so I'm peeking into the lens like this and then just press the shutter to see whether behind the lens anything moves, because that gives me a sort of safety that at least during shipping or anything the camera didn't get damaged. With cameras like this, or the Fisher-Price camera that I recently showed you, the shutter didn't trigger without film, so that is why I had to spend a frame on this test shot. Anyway, I spotted a fine day coming up on the weather forecast and decided to explore a neighbourhood of Innsbruck I haven't checked out yet that looked pretty cool on Google Maps and so I headed out to catch the tram. On my way, when I was waiting for a bus in the city centre, I couldn't resist to begin shooting and practice some street photography with this camera. Right around the corner from the bus stop, I spotted my first scene I wanted to capture. Just a couple people enjoying a breakfast in the sun at the cafe. Here's the result, and I like it. I think it's a good start. The framing is a bit too wide for my taste, but I've left it like this for now. Next, I passed some garages with a view behind them which I decided to shoot. I was quite fond of the layers here with the garages in the foreground and then the layering behind with the houses, the tree and the mountain and the sky at the back. I think that made for an interesting composition. I also appreciate the manholes in the foreground that add a little something to that part of the composition that otherwise would have felt a little empty. Ay, amor, 
So I've come to this neighborhood that goes up the hill and then in the end it should lead to a station that takes me up the mountain. We'll see if that works out and let's see what we find on the way. Then I kept exploring and found a couple cool houses that I wanted to shoot. This was actually the reason for coming here. I had found a route where there appeared to be a couple interesting houses which might be cool subjects. I think this turned out alright. I love the little details beneath the roof of the first house. The composition however feels a little bit sloppy with that tip of the car coming in from the right looking quite, well, unintentional. Then, just as I was about to continue walking, I spotted this guy packing some stuff into the car and I thought it'd be nice to shoot this slice of life scene. Here's the result, and sadly it didn't work out very well. It was rushed and I think the photo shows that. The car and the guy are framed so unclearly behind the fence, the composition just doesn't really work well. Then, here, I was approaching the entrance of an apartment building that caught my attention because of the colour, the sunlight coming in, and the post boxes. There were just multiple things going on here that seemed interesting to me. This is the result, and I like it. I still really like the scene, and I'm happy to have taken the shot. One thing with the camera that becomes visible here is the limitation of the fixed settings. As you can see, even on this bright day, the shadows do tend to struggle with the exposure. They seem a bit muddy here, so maybe next time I might even go for an ISO 800 film. Not sure yet. This is one of the buildings that I had spotted on Google Maps when scouting the location and wanted to check out myself. I thought it looked really cool, so I framed up a shot. Happy to have caught that cyclist here. This shot too, however, feels a little too wide for my taste, so I might end up cropping it a bit. As I was walking here, I thought the tree looked really cute, and I loved the randomness of the scooters below, so I shot a photo. By this time, I had a good first impression of the shooting experience with the camera, and so far, I can say, I love it. The camera is so small that I just had it in my jacket's pocket. Also, it felt safe in a way to just have it in my pocket. The camera is certainly not built like a tank, but it's so compact without any electronical parts except for the flash that it felt so easy to just keep it in the pocket and take it out any time. Also, the lens is tucked in behind a hood, so I wasn't worried about damaging it. And so that, combined with the ease of this camera, made it really fun, thanks to the simplicity. Of course, the price you pay for this ease is the quality and the control. As you saw, some shots don't get enough light because of the fixed settings. I think that's just something I need to practice to get a feel for the suitable situations. And the lens isn't some super high quality glass, which you'd not leave unprotected. Hence, you can see that the edges of the photos aren't sharp and have quite some chromatic aberration. I suppose for anyone that wants a lo-fi look, that would even be a plus. Anyway, I was having great fun shooting on this day.
Then, before we continue, I want to thank the beloved continued sponsor of the channel, Squarespace. Squarespace is a wonderful all-in-one website platform that I've been using for my website for nearly four years now. That is where I present the different projects I've worked on or am currently working on, ranging from short films to photography projects. So here you can look through my work with a little thumbnail and then click see more if you want to see the details where I've either placed the finished work or it says something like in post-production. What I personally love about Squarespace is their interface, which is really simple and easy to understand so that someone like me who wants to present their work online and doesn't need a super complex website can easily build it myself. You can start off with one of the many templates and then customize those to fit your own needs and taste. Head to squarespace.com for a 14 day free trial and then when you're ready to launch your website you can go to squarespace.com slash Crawford to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or a domain. Thank you so much to Squarespace for continuously supporting me and my work here, I really appreciate it. I was approaching a lift station that hides in the midst of the forest, which while walking here looked quite interesting, so I got the shot. And then I saw this person coming my way with the amazing purple coat which I thought would make for a great subject. I think this turned out quite okay, I like how the lines of the road lead the eye to the subject. So this massive station belongs to a train that takes people up the mountain to the lift station where you can catch a gondola that takes you really high up in Spock's close by mountain. And that is exactly the route I was planning to go. I really like how the framing worked in this shot. As you saw, the design of this station is pretty unique and so I shot this photo of a couple people coming out which I think turned out pretty cool. Here, this is called the Seegrube on top of the Nordkette, which is German for North Chain, because this mountain is a part of a chain of mountains on the north side of Innsbruck. This place is at an altitude of 1900 meters, and so there was still some snow left here, and it's basically the closest place to go skiing as an Innsbruck resident. And so I was hoping to find a couple nice photos here to finish the roll.
like how this shot simply captures the happy atmosphere up here where many locals come up to ski or simply enjoy the sun. However, it is also a popular tourist attraction, hence there are a lot of people here giving the place a bustling energy. I think this one also turned out pretty cool with that epic backdrop behind the group of people. Here, I spotted this man quietly sitting with his newspaper, so I framed up a shot to capture this scene. I really like the result, I think it's a fun scene, however now in hindsight I think that it might have been cool to try it from the other side to include the many people behind me. Because that is what intrigued me here, seeing this guy calmly reading the newspaper while everything around him is moving was what caught my attention initially, and that is sadly not conveyed at all in this photograph. And then, to my surprise, I couldn't wind the camera on, so that meant I was already finished with the roll. I was surprised actually because I hadn't realised how much I was shooting, and that brings me to one point of criticism that I have for this camera. <laughs> no, I finished the roll already. I was really missing a shot counter, a little dial or something that would let me know how many frames I have left in the camera. And the lack of that is what led to me being surprised here as I couldn't shoot anymore. So if there should ever be a version 2 of this camera, I would hope that they add that. Anyway, I had great fun trying out this camera and I definitely see myself using it more regularly for specific situations such as a summer trip with friends when I don't want photography to distract me from the experience. I think the simplicity of this camera could really shine in a situation of that sort. I hope you enjoyed this episode and coming along on this fine winter day. Before saying goodbye, I would like to thank the lovely people supporting me on Patreon. Thank you so much to each one of you. If you're interested in Lightroom presets, tutorials or postcards, you can check out my page via the link in the description. Also, I have a print shop by the way, in case that is of interest to you. Also, link in the description. With that said, I hope to see you again soon. Until then, goodbye. Oh.